Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name is Coach Scott. I'll be your host today. Guys, I got a great show for you today. Another great show. I got three guests coming on. We're going to bring them on in just a minute. As always, you can find this in the back episodes of our podcast at our website, OrdinaryMarathoner.com. Check them out if you get a chance. You can also find them at the aggregators, places like Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, iTunes, all that good stuff. Uh, our YouTube page is going to have this one as well. If you like the show, hit that subscribe button. Never miss a new episode that way. Love those subscribers. We really want to uh, say thank you to anyone who's subscribe subscribed to the podcast or the YouTube channel, all that good stuff. It's uh, it's really a cool community we're building here. The Facebook page is going strong. Ordinary Marathon, guys, is in less than three months. So check it out if you get a chance. Uh, go to OrdinaryMarathon.com. You can use uh, coupon code ORDINARY or Team Ordinary. Either one should give you $5 off of the registration. Love to have more people running the race this year, building that thing out. Uh, doing it all for the SAM Fund, a great noble cause that we got going on there, helping out um, young adults dealing with uh, dealing with financial difficulties from cancer and uh, a great cause. Love to have more people join and uh, and participate in the race this year, either the virtual race, which is May uh, 8th through the 17th with a 5K in East Longmeadow. Uh, that is on the 9th, May 9th. And uh, that's it. That's it. So with that, without further ado, I have three guests with me today. So I know normally I have, uh, normally it's just me. And then every once in a while I add one guest. And then I know my last podcast, I actually had two guests on. So I figured why not push the envelope here and bring three in. Now, the great thing about these three guys, two two guys, one girl, uh, is that they are all return, po- return podcast guests. They've all been here before. So they know the drill. They know what it's all about. Even more special about all three of these guys two guys, one girl, <laughs> is uh, is they're all doing the same race this year. And it's no ordinary race either. It is a monster, the Leadville 100. Let me introduce to you guys, returning back to the show, Jeff Beeson, Jen Bergstrom, and Brian Burke. Welcome you guys back to the show. I'm really looking forward to talking to you guys. Hey, great to be back. Hello. All right. So Brian Burke, I want to start with you. Uh, now you were just on the podcast recently, like not too long ago, but I think that's kind of what, what sparked the decision of having this podcast is that, uh, we just had multiple people doing this one monster of a race. You quite literally have written the book on Leadville. So why don't you tell me a little bit of background? Why, why is Leadville so special in general? And then why it's so special to you? Yeah, that's kind of an interesting question. I have no real ties to Colorado. I got no real ties to Leadville. Uh, It was just a race that I just kind of fell in love with the history, the town, the unique culture of a mining town, and then this kick-butt-hard 100-mile race that runs you up into the mountains just to have you turn around and do it all over again. And now it's probably become as as much part of me as uh, about anything else. I mean, I've just fallen in love with the town, fallen in love with the race, and just got to get back there and get it done. Yeah, now you gave it a shot last year. Want to talk a little bit about that? Just give us a little recap. Yeah, it was 2018. I uh, went out there. Uh, would have been my fifth hundred if I would have finished it. And uh, I felt real confident about the race. And actually, fitness wise, I feel real good. I just made some strategy mistakes at points where I thought I was saving my legs for later on. I just I cost myself too much time. And then at uh, Twin Lakes inbound, I was seconds from the cutoff. And I just made some strategic errors. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Climbing up and down Hope Pass twice sucked the life out of me. Uh, but now I look back at it and think if I'd have ran this cor- part of the course instead of saving my legs and power walking, I wouldn't have missed the cutoff. And uh, plus nutrition, you know, I'm a sea level guy. I've run 600s at sea level and nutrition's never an issue. But out there in the mountains, it, it just takes a little bit more out of you. So I got to dial in nutrition as well. Yeah, well so, int- uh, go ahead. I learned a lot in 2018 about myself, about the course, what I got to get stronger at. And uh, I'm already above where I was when I went out there two years ago, where I'm at now in my conditioning. So I'm feeling real good about the summer. Going to go out there 21 days to acclimatize early. So uh, I'm either getting it done or I'm going to die in the mountains, one or the other. <laughs> Please don't die in the mountains, man. We, we like, and then I'm going I'm to lose one of my favorite podcast guests. That would be terrible. <laughs> I'm just worried about me. Uh, but, I, you know, interestingly enough, so so Jen Bertram's coach, 
uh, Jill Becker knows you, has met you in the past, and she left yep. you a message. And it's funny, I, when we started this podcast, I wasn't sure exactly where I was going to try to fit this one in. Uh, but Jen played it for us a little bit earlier. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, uh, try to splice it into the podcast now. Well, hello. This is Jill Becker, one of the Leadville 100 run coaches out here in Colorado. I'm honored to be coaching Jen this year as she gears up for the Leadville 100 for the first time. And hi, Brian. I hear Jen told me you were on this podcast too, and I want to wish you the best of luck on your Leadville journey. Some tips that I would like to give out to these Leadville 100 belt buckle seekers. There's so many things about Leadville. First off, I would be cautious of your heart rate making sure you keep it low going in from the start to May Queen. A lot of common errors are people go out way too fast starting the race and then it tanks the race for the rest of the day. Also, nutrition is a huge part. I would make sure you are practicing your nutrition in all of your training and any races that you do leading up to Leadville. Also, coming from sea level, some of that nutrition it's going to be touch and go, so you're going to want to make sure that you get out to Leadville or some form of altitude prior to the Leadville 100 would be one of my other recommendations. Also, um, the dread mill or treadmill, getting those climbing legs ready, so putting that incline up and just getting that hiking down, fast hikes. But another common error is Leadville is very runnable. There's just a couple of those mountains you have to climb, but... It's all of that runnable sections where people lose a lot of that time. And lastly, I would just want to remind people that in any 100 mile race, whether it's Leadville or any other one, that reminding yourself of who you are and what your why is, is very important. Along with forward is a pace, keep moving forward and keep digging deep and keep being relentless till you get to that finish line. Um, she gave you a little bit of good advice regarding, uh, you know, nutrition, altitude training, climbing. Is that kind of stuff that you've been already doing? Or, you know, do you have any messages uh, for Jill after hearing what her advice? Oh, yeah, definitely taking her advice. She's someone I look up to. I drop her a message every here and there asking questions. And like just about that climbing bit, I've already been two hours at 15 percent on the treadmill and we're just barely into February, you know. I, I, like I said, I'm going all out this time. We're not leaving anything on the on the, on, the, on the table. That's awesome. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect anything less from from a guy like you, Brian. Um, that's great. So I'm going to go to Jeff next because uh, Jeff, I haven't talked to you in a long time, and I know you, yeah. I know you have uh, tried your hand at this race as well. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? A little bit about your experience with with Leadville, and and let us know why you're going back. You know. Last year it was it was uh, I felt good about it, but around mile ten on Turquoise Lake, I uh, I just took a fall and pulled a muscle, uh, pushed on through, got up to uh, Hope Pass and I missed the cutoff there. And you know it was a great race. I was kind of uh, taken aback by the the how runnable it was. Uh, it was flat areas, and I spent so much time training on the mountains that the flat spots took me off guard. So it was so it was tough. Yeah, Just yeah. took you by surprise. And uh, so, I mean, was it, I mean, you kept going. It sounds like you got hurt and you kind of tried to keep going and you just, I mean, are, is it something that you're really looking forward to kind of getting your redemption this year? Are you, you know, are you, you know, what, what's, what's going on in your, in your mind right now? What made you, oh, what made you kind of like register for this sucker again? Oh, I, we were making plans for it on the way home. We were, we were already <laughs> thinking about where to stay and making plans to get back into it. So, yeah. And I remember, yeah. I kind of feel like you did this, like a very similar thing with your first 50 miler, right? I mean, am I, well, am I mistaken? Oh, it was a hundred miler. Yeah. Okay. All right. So maybe you got through 50 or 60 miles and then, and then went, yeah. but, but then you went back the following year to, to go get revenge and it, and you oh, did. Yeah. yeah. I got that. So. so you're good at the revenge thing. I i am betting. Yeah. So that's two guys I'm betting on right now. Let's move it over to Jen. Uh, Jen, it sounds like you're the, you're the only one that hasn't faced this beast and lost. You, you're, you're going at it fresh. This is your first time. Uh, what made you select this race? And hearing these stories, I mean, these are, these are guys that are in shape. These are guys that have run hundreds before. And, uh, 
Oh, uh, you've I I know, but I'm saying you've run hundreds too, obviously. And uh, is there something different about Leadville? Is it is it is it intimidating to you, especially now that you hear hear these uh, stories? Or how are you approaching it? Yeah, I'd be stupid to say that I wasn't a little scared. Um, a, a lot of people get um, pulled at uh, Twin Lakes. That is the most common section, and I think um, Brian can probably agree with me that. Um, people get pulled from. And as, as Jill said, it's um, a very, very runnable course to the point where, and uh, Jeff said the same thing. He noticed all how runnable it was. It's a matter of training yourself up to be able to run those runnable sections because you'll get to hope pass and it'll suck all the hope out of you, you know, twice. Why don't they call it and- hopeless pass then? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. So it's like I'm, I, I'm pegging on the fact that I know I have what it. I'm in shape enough. I know that I have the mental capacity to withstand the pains from hundreds and from having done Ironmans and stuff. And I have a Leadville coach and someone again. Brian can attest to she's very good. Uh, she knows how to get me prepared for it. And the fact that I get to go to Leadville multiple times this year, and it's about 90 minutes away from here. Um, so it's not that bad a drive to go, uh, to go there and go run there because it's just, just as far to Rocky mountain national park or whatever. There's like a whole bunch of places and I already live at altitude. So it's practicing, dialing in the, the nutrition, it's uh, strength training, um, it's doing those treadmill inclines, um, which Jill like wanted to kill me tonight, basically, <laughs> with her inclines. She said, you look good on it. I saw, I saw you doing it. You look good at your workout. But change it. You do. She has me doing intervals right now. So I'll do like five minutes at 8% at uh, four miles per hour. So I am slogging up it because it's less harsh on your muscles than trying to walk at four miles per hour. And then um, I did two minutes at a 830 pace, you know, uh, flat, because if I tried to do an 830 pace going up an 8% incline on the treadmill, Right now, I'm pretty sure I'd fly off, and it wouldn't be pretty, and people would be laughing at me, or they'd be calling an ambulance at the gym. But yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty confident between the amount of races I'm doing in Leadville, between the marathon and the 50 mile or Silver Rush, um, and going to uh, the four day run camp, um, that I have all the tools I need to succeed in this, as long as I mentally can try to hit every workout the best I can yeah, and actually push myself. Yeah. It sounds like, you know, it sounds like you have a, you have a real focused approach. Uh, yeah. You obviously you have the coach training you and helping you out and point, giving you, you know, good direction, challenging you too. Apparently it sounds like, uh, you know, I think one, one of the, one of the things I think when you train by yourself and you don't have a coach is sometimes it's, you, you, you just go out and you run and you just go out and do distance. You just go out, you know, you never really do like all these, these, um, you know, the, the, the treadmill runs that you're talking about where they're kind of prescribed to do, to do inclines and heavy inclines and stuff. It sounds like, uh, you have a real structured approach, which is really good. And I kind of want to take that and I want to bring it over to the guys and we'll start with Brian. Um, how are you approaching this race? What, you know, I, I know I saw something on, on Facebook the other day. We actually talked about it briefly where you were on like 15% inclines on the treadmill. What, what's the kind of approach that you're taking? I mean, I know you're, you're kind of old hat with this. You're, you are a, uh, an old, we've talked, we talked about this a, a month ago. You are a, uh, a very experienced ultra marathoner. Are you doing anything different? What's the approach in training this time as you're going after Leadville? Yeah. I think that was part of the mistakes I guess I made last time as I relied on my normal hundred mile training routine where I basically just throw bulk miles at it. And again, I've, that was the first hundreds I never finished. And my typical hundreds are around 21, 22 hours, but that's East coast. So this year, every workout's focusing on something. Like I said, Monday was a treadmill 15% day. 
Then I ran an easy day. Hey, can we just stop? Because you did, you're making it sound very, you're not, you're oh, 15%. Like you were on for, for two hours. Two hours. Yeah. Four one intervals where I would fast hike for four minutes and then run for a minute, fast hike for four, run for one until two hours was over. And I think the people at Planet Fitness were happy I left. <laughs> <laughs> Someone clean up the floor over here. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm also doing, I call them hill fartlicks. The little area that I run on Fort Lee has got a bunch of nice little rolling inclines. So I'm timing the inclines for my speed work. So yep. instead of doing fartlicks on flat ground, I'm doing them up these little inclines. And I'm, I'm just trying to train as hard as I can, drag in the tire. Now you're in Cle- uh, you're in Cleveland too, right? So that's not really, is that high altitude? I don't think so, right? It's pretty low. Uh, I'm in Richmond, Virginia at sea level. Oh, all right. You're just because you're a Cleveland Brown fan. That's why. That's right. I just kind of right. assume that you're there. Um, and but go ahead. And even when I'm, my rest day is walking with my wife, she'll walk six, seven miles. You know, I'm talking fast walk, 14, 15 minute miles. But I bought a 16 pound vest. So I wear that while I'm doing my recovery walks or my rest day walks. So I'm just trying to have every single workout focused on Leadville. No more just bulk, wasteful miles. They all got to mean something. Yeah, when is this race anyway? It's like late in the year, right? It's fall? August. Twenty seventh. Oh, August, sorry. So not as late as I thought. So Jeff, let's take that question over to you. Uh, you know, the same sort of approach. Now, uh, obviously, you're experienced ultramarathoner as well. Um, you know, you went out there last year, you gave it a shot. Uh, you know, it sounds like, you know, you had an, sort of the injury issue. Is what's So what's your approach now? I mean, is it similar to what you the way you approached last year? Or are you doing anything differently? I'm focusing a little bit more on my strength training. Um, hill repeats, I've been doing that. I, where I live, we have some good inclines. So sticking with that, uh, I'm going to work a little bit more on my speed. That way I'm, I'm better off on the flat. So uh, kind of touch on what Jen said people, you know, missing cutoffs at Twin Lakes. If you're thinking about running this race, miss the cutoff there. Don't miss it at Hope Pass. Hope Pass, uh, if you miss it there, you have to go back down six miles under your own power. So <laughs> it's easier at the, uh, at the lakes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but of course the downhill is not too bad with coming out of Hope Pass, but, uh, it's getting up there. It's, it's pretty tough. So, um, yeah, I'm focusing more on the flats though. That, that was my big big weakness this year so what about mentally jeff are you uh are, you know is there anything any kind of exercise you go through or anything that you i mean obviously it's a long day and maybe two days out there i don't know um do you are, are, what's your approach mentally with this thing you know after after kind of after hurting the ankle or was it the ankle you said oh, i was calf calf after hurting the calf last year are you uh you know is is say like overcoming the uh the potential of getting injured or, or having something like that happen again is that part of it or are you just kind of like are, are, what are you doing to prepare mentally you know that's just something that happens you know how many thousands of steps or you know hundreds of thousands of steps do you take during an ultra marathon and it was just one little misstep that that caused all of it so you know it, you can't dwell on that you just keep moving yeah. so that's that's my plan so Let's say, you know, we'll take that angle over to Jen. Jen, when you think about uh, training for an ultra, you think about race day. What goes through your mind sort of as you're approaching that starting line? Is it, um, you know, when you when you think about the mental battle and what it's going to take to to go 100 miles, to do all this altitude, you know, at this altitude, up and down all these hills, um, what do you take as sort of, you know, motivation, I, I would say, or inspiration slash motivation. What would you, you know, how, what's your approach? Uh, that's tough. I mean, like I have to, in terms of mentally, I have to break it down into sections. And I think the guys can attest to that because if you think about the big picture, it's too overwhelming. You got to be, I mean, especially something like Leadville, which is a, a you know, uh, a very cutoff based race. So you need to be thinking about those cutoffs. I need to be thinking about that as motivation. I mean, and, and to answer more of your question about what internally motivates me, uh, I have a bunch of ultra running heroes and people that I run with here. Um, and people that I, I just look up to and I've a- asked for advice and, I think it's very similar with all of us in the community and all of the really strong runners are really supportive 
of everybody else in the community. Like I find it not to rag on Iron Man, but I find it less competitive and more supportive in a different sort of way. Yeah. Than, uh, than the triathlon community. And I've just fallen in love with that. So I know that everybody out there is fighting the same battle and that is reassuring to me. And I also know that I have mentally prepared myself and I can get through this. I know, I mean, my biggest motivator is, and I think we've talked about this before is my um, depression that actually uh, ran pretty deep and I never want to go there again. And the thing that got me into endurance sports besides wanting to lose weight way back when was that this keeps me sane and happy. So um, pushing myself and finding um, like my limits or pushing myself beyond my limits and finding out what this little body can do just makes me happy. And trails just make me happy. And having moved here to Colorado makes me happy. So all of the above. I, I think that's great. And you know, what's, you know, what's great too, is, I, is I, I, I get you the question and then you kind of give me a nice segue into these, into these other guys. So I can take that and, and ask Brian a uh, similar thing. Like, um, you know, as opposed to, to training, we talked about your training and all that motivation that it takes to, to run at a 15 degree incline, all that stuff. What makes you not even, uh, you know, and not even Leadville in particular, but what makes you want to do this? What makes you uh, keep coming back year after year, 100 miler after 100 miler? Um, what drives Brian Burke? That's a good question. I, sometimes I don't know and sometimes I know. Uh, you know, back I wasn't much of an athlete back in high school and all that. And I had a football coach. I probably shouldn't say his name, but he basically told me out in a guidance counselor that I would re really never amount to anything. So uh, I think about him a lot during 100-mile races, and uh, I can't say I'm running for revenge against him, but when I feel bad or I feel like maybe I can't, I just try to remember what it felt like when someone tells you you can't do something. Uh, it just makes you want to do it, I guess. You know, that's uh, that's a really interesting answer. Um, you know, I, I can't tell. Like I talk about sometimes I talk about negative motivation and how – you know, we take when people tell you that you can't do something, how it, you know, it just sticks in your head sometimes. And, you know, and, and you know, the reason I, I brought that up is because I know I, I dealt with a little bit of that when, when training for my first marathon. And I just remember that always helped me through training. And then when we took it to the actual race day, I never needed to draw on that for whatever reason. Now, it was always good things. Do you ever find the same thing or you you find yourself during races? You, I, I guess you kind of mentioned that you do draw on that still sometimes during races. Yeah, some of the, the ugly parts of a hundred, you know, when maybe eighty mile, a mile eighty or so, and you just you really don't want to keep going. Sometimes I, I kind of run, I guess, pissed off. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'm ha I'm having fun and all, but I'm I'm angry at the moment. I guess is the only way I can say it. Not at anybody or anything, but there is that driving force that, you know, I don't want to fail. I mean, I. I can hear Ken Clover's voice saying that if you fail at Leadville, you're going to remember it for the rest of your life. I think about Leadville every single day. Yeah. And as and you should, as you should. I mean, you know, you signed up for this thing. I, I, oh, I'm going to say that's all three. You guys signed up for this thing. You all deserve what you got coming to you. But <laughs> you know, Leadville, just, Leadville gets in your blood. Yeah. That's all it does. Best, but. It does. And, and, and Jeff, I, I kind of know what, I feel like I know what you're going to say when I, when I bring this question to you. Uh, cause I know that you did, I, and, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. So if I'm going the wrong direction, you can, you can change, you can change the answer, but I know you've done a lot of work for team RWB. Uh, yeah. Yeah. and you work hard and you've done a lot. You've always kind of had that military connection. Is that part of, of your motivation and why you're still out there running these races? Uh, or am I completely off the mark? Well, you know, that's that's part of it. Uh, well, and, you know, last year and this year, I'm raising money for First Ascents for can cancer survivors. But, um, you know, as far as personal motivation goes, um, I just want to see how far I can push myself. You know, I want to see where I can go with it. You know, my dad was 44 when he died of heart disease. I'll be 48 on race day. I, you know, kind of feel like I'm overcoming what, what he, he didn't. Yeah. So... That's, you hear a common theme? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of overcoming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys all, 
uh, you know, I, I've talked on the podcast about my thoughts on, on doing an ultra and I, I, for some reason I can never summon up, uh, like, I feel like the, I, I'm in touch with the desire that I need to have to want to do it as badly as you guys want to do it. Uh, especially when I talk to people who do these races all the time and it's like, wow, you, it's, it's incredible. I, the, 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 just the thought of doing a hundred miles in one day is just incredible to me. And I know what it would take for me. And I just, I don't feel like I have that yet. Like I don't have that desire to do it. And to hear it come out of all your, all your mouths is just, uh, it's really, it's touching in a way. And it's, it's kind of like, it's really inspirational in another way. Just, I mean, it's a hundred miles and, and here I am talking to three people that are going to go out and I, you know, if I, my money would be on all three of you guys finishing this time, I'll knock on wood just so I, I don't drink any of you guys. But, uh, uh, you know, when you, um, so it sounds like, you know, Jen, you had like, uh, you said you were sort of a little intimidated, a little nervous. I think you actually even said scared. Um, but you've done a hundred before. Uh, mm-hmm. what is, where will this, when you cross the finish line, cause I'm confident you're going to, what is, uh, what's the feeling going to be like? Is it going to be, is it any different than any other hundred or is it special? Cause it's Leadville. Hmm. I guess I'll know when I cross that finish line. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, this is a iconic race and I think the guys sounded like they agreed with that. This is a very iconic race in the, um, hundred mile, um, you know, ultra, um, realm. So, um, I, you know, I, I, I guess it's, yeah, it's, it's, can we re-record that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you want me to re-ask it again or you? Yeah, ask the question I just, again. no, when you cross the finish line, is it going to feel similar to the, your other finishes or no, you think it's going to be special? I think every, but I think every hundred is every hundred is different, you know, like I, the training's different, the location's different. And this is just, yeah, this is a different race. This is a different beast. This is a mountain ultra. Um, Havelina was a, a, you know, a desert ultra. I mean, it comes with its own challenges. It's not a lot of, um, you know, uh, elevation gain. It's like 7,900 feet over, um, a hundred miles, which is in that, horrible for a hundred. Um, but that comes with heat. Um, and it was a hot day as if you remember my podcast. Um, but yeah, this has different terrain. It has, it has hope pass. A lot of it's runnable. A lot of it's very similar to what I'm used to running on a, um, you know, like, uh, well, every weekend, because I get out to the trails on the weekend, I do a lot of treadmill work, uh, midweek and get out on some, some road runs as well. And road running is actually, that's actually a good thing, um, to practice for this race, as opposed to other races, just because of the strength building. So, and yeah. how fun some of it can be. So, I mean, so, that's to that point too. So I'm, I'm actually going to go back now in reverse order and ask a similar question to Jeff. Uh, so Jeff, obviously we, you know, we had the, the injury last year and the, and, and everything. And, and now this year you're doing things a little differently. You're, you're approaching it in, in, in that, in the way that we just talked about. And um, what about for you, when you when you hit that finish line this year, is it going to feel like redemption? Is it going to feel like uh, elation? How is that going to How is that going to feel for you? Or is it something you just don't even want to think about because you just want to? Oh live? man, I think about this all the time. <laughs> uh, it's, elation, I guess, would be the best word. I mean, David Goggins put it best. I mean, he said you train for months and years for that that one moment, and I mean that's that one moment of glory, and that's what I think about. It's just it's it's going to be glorious for a moment and then life's going to move on next challenge. <laughs> yeah. And you, you know, you think about it too. Yeah. You know what though? You do make a good point because like, you know, like I said, you you went after the race last year and then you've trained for, you know, you're going to be training for a year since the last race. But then before that, you had to train for th- that race. And then before that you had to tra- train for the hundred before that. So this isn't like, 
it's not like a training cycle of one year that we're talking about. This is a training cycle of pretty much since the day I, you know, that I met you, yeah. um, you know, which is going probably going on four or five years right now. Yeah. Uh, so, it, you know, it, it, it's a good point. You know, I, I think of races in terms of, you know, uh, this is my training block for this race. But in reality, I mean, you got to train for a race like this for, for multiple years. This is not, uh, you know, not a, a little, a little well, deal. On that subject, I do have to give kudos to my wife because I did promise her no hundred milers for 2020. <laughs> uh, when I missed it, she did agree to let me go for it again. So, all right. So you got it. You got the waiver. <laughs> yeah. So Brian, I'm, I left you for, for last on that question for a reason, because, you know, like I said, you wrote the book on this, ra- on this race. And, and I know that a lot of people know this race because of your book. Uh, and then you go out and you run it last year. And you didn't, you didn't, weren't able to bring it home. So how about for you this year? Is this, uh, and now you, I know you've, you said you stepped up the training and, and all, you know, all the hill workouts you're doing, uh, you got to be feeling a little bit more confident going into this year. What's it going to feel like for you to finish this race? Huh. <laughs> Life defining, maybe, maybe that's the word. Uh, when I failed at, at, at Twin Lakes inbound, it was crushing, soul crushing. I mean, I was destroyed, to be honest with you. That was the first hundred I didn't finish. That was the most significant race I ever DNF'd. I had my entire family out there. I had a big crew out there. I had, because of the book, a lot of people watching. And it was just personally defeating. Uh, social media, I felt embarrassed. Uh and I got to be honest with you, for a few days, I hated Leadville. Yeah. My wife was there with me for a couple days to go sightseeing, and I walked by the Leadville store, and I wanted to throw up. I wanted to throw the biggest hissy fit you could ever imagine because I was so crushed internally, and I just felt like such a failure to myself and to others, although everybody's telling you, you did great, you did great. I'm still laying in the dirt at Twin Lakes in a mess. So, Damn, man. To- Cross that finish line and get that buckle, I think, will, and I hate to say it that way, I mean, I'm just an average middle-of-the-pack guy, but it might validate where I feel like I belong in the running world, maybe. I, 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 I just, I don't know. Damn, and that's, uh, that is, uh, wow, that is, that is a tough answer, man. I, I'm, uh, let me ask you this, Brian, um, is there a mental part of you that goes to that point where you couldn't go any further last time? And when you pass that point this year, is are you gonna? Is it something that you're gonna know? All right, you know, are you looking forward to that moment right now, or are you are you looking at that moment and thinking, uh, you know, what you know, are, with uncertainty, or, or are you questioning it? What what? How are you approaching the moment where you get to that point where you were at last year? That's you know what I'm saying. Is that is that tough mentally? I I don't think I don't think the distance because I've done hundreds. You know, like I said I. Yeah, I don't think it's a distance thing. It's like everyone's mentioning. It's a very runnable course, although I was scared to run some sections because I knew what was in front of me. So I chose to maybe walk a little longer than I should have. So it was never up to the moment that lady stepped in front of me at Twin Lakes and told me I was too late. I never thought I wouldn't finish. So I was like being conservative for the victory, not realizing I was cutting my own throat, if if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's, After I got uh, through, that's tough. Through, as I approached Hope Pass the first time, I I walked the little field section. I say walk. I power walked it as I was eating, thinking, save my legs for the climb. If I would have ran that, there were the few seconds I needed. I got stuck on the conga line going down the backside of Hope Pass, and I didn't want to be that guy that pulled out and blew past everybody. And now I think. I had to be that guy. I should have been that guy. I shouldn't have waited behind that person. I shouldn't have worried about whether I made them uncomfortable because I passed them. I was trying to be a good soldier thinking I'm saving myself. People, if you're in front of me on the backside of Hope Pass, just apologize right now. (laughs) I'm going to run you over. I'm sorry. I can't do this again. I cannot fail again. I'm just, I don't know what else to say. Well, you know, Brian, you, you know, that's kind of what I've been going through. You know, this whole year, you, you second guess every little move you made the whole race. And, you know, you can't you can't spend your whole time doing that. But you want as a person, you want to know what could I have done different? So that's why I yeah. want to go back. Yeah, it's it's Leadville's not a 
it's not just a hundred mile race. It's it's even though I did all the research on the book and I read, you know, Hope Pass is at the absolute worst possible place for a hundred mile race. You have forty miles of running and racing on your legs, and then you face that climb back to back. It's not just a normal hundred mile, a bun ten thousand feet at altitude. It, Leadville is unique. I'm not saying it's the hardest race out there because obviously you got hard rock in Western states, but it is a very unique hundred mile race. Hundred mile races don't scare me. Leadville, I damn well respect. Ryan, what do you think about Powerline though? Did you get to do Powerline? Uh, outbound, yeah. Not inbound because I got cut at Twin Lakes inbound, so I never got to go back over Albert or Powerline in the dark. But what did you? think of that as a climb it's it's tough but i had you know i missed it by seconds i had 12 hours to go 40 miles i have no doubt i could have made 12 out 40 miles in 12 hours but the cutoffs at twin lakes inbound are tough and they're tough for a reason you know in a normal hundred that's not even a cutoff time that i wor- i worry about and here i missed it I, you know i just ca- i cannot get over that this is not your ordinary hundred. <laughs> no, it's not. See what I did there, Scott. <laughs> no, that's it. I like that. I like that. Work it in. Work it in. Uh, it's all about the marketing and the branding. Um, <laughs> so, with that, you know, that being said, though, interesting point. Now, uh, Jen, did you have you did you you didn't go watch Leadville last year, right? You you haven't like actually. I was at Montre- I was racing Montreblanc the same weekend. Gotcha. So, do you? Uh, we have two guys here who have been there. Uh, and I know you know people who have been there, so it's not anything new. But I'm just wondering, do you have any questions for these guys in terms of what to expect when you get there or how you know how things are set up? I think for Leadville, I, I was volunteering 18 hours for the races there. I just wasn't at the 100 this yeah. year. So, so you feel like yeah. you're well prepared. You've, you've kind of, uh, even though you haven't run it, you've, uh, you've experienced it. I, yes. And uh, between... Um, the fact that I'm doing the marathon there, like I said, I'm doing Silver Rush 50. They're on different courses, but they're still in Leadville. Um, the run camp goes over the whole entire course um, in four days. Um, and um, I'm also probably going to go back there with a couple friends to an unofficial run camp to uh, run on the course at some point. So, I'll get there plenty of times. Cool. And, yeah. You get a little chance to, to experience it before you real experience the oh, real thing. Yeah. I've sat down with and picked plenty of people over here so, in Colorado who's, yeah, who have okay. done their, they've done, they've done the race. I've, I've uh, picked their brains, yeah. including my coach who's done it successfully twice. Yeah. And, and the fact that she did it in, the first time in 29 and a half hours and she's a fairly fast runner that tells you how difficult that race is to not that there's not runnable parts but it's all about pacing and preparing yourself for those climbs and yeah. making those cutoffs and, and like you know like you said before too about the about the the sort of the ultra running community as a whole you guys are all yeah. it's like you're all helpful you're all in it for each other and uh you know, I asked you if you have any questions. Of course you don't. You've asked them all. Cause you, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'll have other ones and I'll, I'll hit, uh, hit <laughs> Brian, you know, or, or Jeff uh, up on, uh, you know, uh, on uh, Facebook or something. Yeah. And plus Brian has promised to, when he can't, comes out here way ahead of time to uh, get together with me. There you Heck go. Yeah. There yeah, you, uh, you know what? You guys should, uh, you know, wear your ordinary marathoner shirts and uh, take a picture for me. I would love, I'd love to see that. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to come. And I gotta take you. To, oh, jeez. I gotta take you to some of the breweries out here if you drink, though, because you know I drink for the beer. I mean, you run for the beer. Yeah. I run. I drink for the beer. Yeah, I run for the beer. <laughs> there you go. Well, listen. Uh, you know, three of my favorite guests all, of all time, and it's so great. Uh, that we've all been able to kind of stay in touch with each other. And it's so great that you three are doing this amazing, amazing race. I, I'm just like, I'm pulling so hard for all three of you guys. 
Uh, you know, I, I, I know, you know, I can't even imagine what it takes to get this thing done. And, uh, and I can't believe that I know three people that are going to do it. So, uh, you should all know that we'll be cheering you on. We'll be following you. I don't know if they have tracking or however they do that. Obviously it's, it's not till August. So we have a while to figure that out, but, um, I wish all you guys the best of luck. I, I mean, truly, I, you guys are, are very, all of you in your own sense are very inspirational. And I'll, I'd, I'd like to just kind of give you guys each just, you know, one last chance to kind of say, say anything that's on your mind. You know, why don't we start with Brian? Um, yeah, I, I just wish you the best of luck, dude. And, uh, and I think you're going to get it this time. And, uh, just anything on your mind or why even plug your last book, dude, cause I want to hear it. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. you've been a great supporter, but yeah, running the Leadville is on Amazon. Uh, the book unfinished, uh, features the, uh, JFK 50, uh, East coast iconic ultra marathon. Again, they're not stories only about running the relationship stories, life stories, and a little bit of my life intermixed in between the pages. But again, I appreciate the support. I love what you're doing. Uh, we'll definitely all hook up when we're out there in Leadville and uh, get psyched up before the race and show off our buckles afterwards. And you know what? We also, we're going to do this again after the race. You guys all got to promise me you come back and we'll all celebrate. Uh, so, you know, when you're out there running, make sure you remember you got to finish because you're going to have to come back to the podcast and face me. Uh, Jeff, on to you. Um, any last words, anything, you know, anything, any last thing that, that you want to, you want to say before, uh, we cut a, cut a quick quits for the day? Well, I want to thank you, Scott, for your support, but I also want to add in when I was thinking about signing up for Leadville the first time, it was, you know, I was kind of teetering on it and I had this one last sign that told me I need to go ahead and do it. And that was, I want a book, an autographed book by this guy named Brian. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian, I want to thank you for putting me in this mess <laughs> uh, you're welcome man i That's appreciate awesome. it by the way jill said uh she loved your book um the on leadville uh brian great you know it's funny is there was a male version of the cover and there was a female version of the cover and she was the female runner for the female wow. version of the cover oh, was she that's amazing <laughs> yeah. that's amazing who knew who knew jen uh last chance for you what anything anything you want to say to before we wrap it up or yeah, advice to the guys, don't have Jaeger schnitzel the <laughs> night before, um, unless you want to, and uh, stay up till 1130 playing Cards Against Humanity. Um, not saying anything might have happened this past weekend before our race, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I blame I blame that and for all life choices. <laughs> that, you know, that's right. I actually mentioned this on my podcast Monday, Jen, was that you did an ultra this weekend, right? Stories? It was six, I cut oh, back. Oh, it was time race. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. But how many miles did you wind up getting in? Oh, uh, well, considering we had a foot of snow, I still trudged forward like 19. <laughs> All right. I give you so that. That's it, credit. It's because there was a lot of power hiking. It was in Colorado Springs. It was gorgeous. Uh, I don't know if you saw the pictures I posted. I did. It looked like uh, you were having fun. Uh, up close and personal with a deer. <laughs> I did see that. I didn't think it was real. <laughs> no, that was very real. They're uh, mule deer. Yeah. Uh, or not white-tailed deer. Uh, friendly. And friendly they deer. were standing there staring at us, and lots of people got pictures. It was um, really, really amazing. So That's awesome. I, you know, it's a different, different environment out there in Colorado, I guess. <laughs> at least but it's different, more different than, uh, than, than New England, right? It's got to be. Hey, I'm, I'm super happy and super happy yeah. we closed on our first house on Friday. So. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yay. That's great. <laughs> so listen, I, again, I just want to wish all three. Our roots here. <laughs> I wish, wish all three of you guys the best of luck in August. Uh, we're going to follow you. We're going to have you all back on here uh, after the race. Um, thank you all for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. With that, we're going to wrap it up today. We're going to wish these guys good luck in August. Good luck with their training. I uh, hope they get it done. They, I know they're all going to get it done. They're all uh, they're all just phenomenal people, and, uh, and we'll be rooting for them. We'll be pulling for them. And that being said, we're going to wrap it up today. And remember, every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So good afternoon, guys. Now-